Hey guys, it's been quite a while since I last did a video. Um, been busy doing stuff like applying for uni and you know hoping to go off and do electrical engineering. So uh, that'll be good. Um, apart from that, uh, yeah, this <laughs> uh, my other laser cutter. I did have it actually sent up here, uh, but what happened was because I've got you know all this other stuff in this garage, it really you know, took up this entire corner, you know, right up to this bench here. And because I had so much work still to do on it, you know, like putting casing on, I just really didn't have the space. So I sort of sold that off to as a project to uh, someone else that I know. And uh, he's going to be using it for canvas cutting, I believe. So, yeah, be interesting to see what he does with it. Um, he said he was going to try, like, auto-feeding in material and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, what I did with that money is bought one of these off eBay. Um, so what it is, is it has a uh, 500 by 300 workspace. Um, yeah, it's kind of the next step up from those, uh, those really cheap, uh, the really cheap like $800 machines. So, you know, the really nice thing is it's got a uh, DSP in it and it's, got like a z-axis which is why it takes up so much space down that way um, yeah this is the uh, water pump they include which is kind of a bodgy setup but it works just got the water chiller down there um, I really would like to run it at like a lower temperature but because I'm back in the tropics now condensation is just a pain in the ass so as you can see I've already got condensation going on there even at 23 degrees uh, they claim that's a 50 watt laser, but no, I, don't, I, could, I think it's just a generic 40 watt tube. I've had one of those before, so yeah, not really a big deal. Um, the really nice thing about this is everything's removable. Like you've got these quick remove latch things, and you can you get into everything. So you've got the exhaust fan down there, uh, start or run capacitor there, and there's a little water flow or valve thing down there so the laser can tell when it's got water and when it doesn't um, that was actually mounted up near the fan there but the welds broke off during shipping so I'll have to find a way to reattach that um, yeah. got switches for air, water, laser and main power and also the USB to the computer interface and also a uh, USB flash drive interface. So you can actually like load the files onto USB drive and put them right in there and go off this control panel. But I prefer to have a computer here so I can like tweak the designs and stuff. Um, what I'll actually do is, because this has an manual air switch, but the, the um, DSP controller actually has an output that allows it to turn the air pump on and off when a job starts. And this air pump, if you leave it running too long, it does get quite warm. So you really don't want to sort of leave it running accidentally for a long time or you'll probably burn it out. Um, because of the reduced airflow, it's not like an aquarium where it sort of can pump the full volume of air through. Instead it's being limited by all this tubing and then the nozzle, so... Um, yeah, in here... All the electronics in here so got the DSP controller power supply for everything there uh, two stepper drivers the laser power supply and then down here I've already made my own little modification um, that's just a 12 and a 5 volt power supply brick so what I did is I installed some extra LED strip in here because it's got the fluor up the back but it gets blocked by this arm so when it's dark then this arm's here you can't sort of see anything around here so I put some LED strip under here and also some along the front here yes yeah, so that lights up pretty evenly um, yeah but the price I paid for it they go for about 2,800 Australian with shipping included uh, I managed to get a 10% discount so you know 2,500 or something I paid for it 
for what it is, it's, so far it's been really good for what, it, what I paid for it. Um, you know, these bearings are quite smooth and the accuracy is pretty good, even though it isn't belt reduced. See. Yeah, there's no belt reduction though, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, can't really expect too much for that kind of money. Um, manual adjustable Z axis. Uh, this is a bit stiff at the moment, but I think as you know, as you use it more, it'll sort of wear in. Um, I'll probably end up actually motorizing this because it takes forever to wind it all the way up and down by hand. Um, yeah, you can see the cutting bed's already taken abuse. That's come out of some wood that I've been cutting, and that stuff is really nasty. It's all sticky, and you know you don't really want you know perfectly clear stuff like that sitting on that. So um, this is the default bed that comes with it. I'm going to probably replace it with honeycomb or aluminium egg crate, so that'll work better for you know cutting stuff like that. So then the beam doesn't hit the bed and reflect back up. It just goes straight through. So as you can see here, probably, next to the cut there, there's a few distortions where the beam sort of reflected back up and melted the bottom of the acrylic. So, yeah, it's not really ideal, but if you're only doing just engraving, it'll probably be, you know, perfect, but because I want to be able to do lots of cutting as well, I'm going to have to change that up. Um, interestingly enough, it actually uses inductive limit switches. I wasn't really expecting that. I thought micro switches would have been cheaper, but obviously not. They're quite nice. Um, yeah, one up there for the X axis too, or Y actually. Um, yeah, apart from that, it's all you know, easily adjustable mounts, so that's a good thing. It's got this little red aiming laser on the side here, which is pretty useless, so I'll probably end up getting like a uh, beam combiner and putting it here so it merges in with the main beam. So, But those optics are quite expensive, around 75 bucks for the lens, so that's something else to work on later, I suppose. So, Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, we'll chuck the software here. So the software it comes with is called Laserwork, or the shortcut says it's called laser work, but this says it's called RD cam. So, you know, typical Chinese software, sort of just all, yeah, it's not the greatest software, but it works, sort of. Uh, one thing about it is it doesn't, uh, sometimes it doesn't save your settings. So, I had a problem where the uh, X axis were actually mirrored, so I had to unselect that and also put the laser head in the uh, top left corner because that's just sort of where I prefer the origin to be. So that's all good. Um, what I'm going to do, so I'll import. So I'll choose something to import here, and that, that'll do. Uh, open that up. Sort of takes up the whole entire page. Um, this machine actually comes with all the parameters programmed by default, so you really don't even have to set in any of the software up. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll lock that so it stays the same and change it to you know, 50 millimeters. Zoom in on that and I was going to try and see if I could smooth out the edges a bit so now try curve smooth. I don't know how well this will work, but anyway. Uh, okay, we'll do. Uh, 10 millimeters a second. Full power. Okay. We'll download that. Alright, so I've got this sitting up on some resistors here for now, um, 
I'm going to try getting some gang nails until I can afford the egg crate and try sitting them upside down. Because apparently that works pretty well too. So, uh, yeah, what we'll do is if we hit the frame button, it'll sort of return to its origin and then outline what it's going to cut. And that seems awfully huge. Uh, have a look in here. Menu. Uh, yeah, sometimes it doesn't actually download properly, which is weird. So let's go back to here. And hit download. So now we're on file 21, so that should be it. So if we hit frame. Uh, so what we'll do is move it. And I'll turn the speed down a bit. Yeah, uh, 20, that'll do. So we'll set that as the origin, and then we can hit frame again. Alright, so we'll turn on the air pump. And I've actually got the air assist turned right down, because it tends to give you a better edge on acrylic, so it's just enough to keep the lens clean. Shut this, because it stinks. And we we'll go. And you can see the uh, reflection off the metal there that's burnt the acrylic a bit at the top. Yeah, so that's why you don't want to do cutting on flat bits like this, especially reflective ones. So, yeah, the edge is pretty good. This is just some scrap acrylic I had laying around, so it's not the best stuff, but good enough for testing. It's a little bit thin, really, so, yeah been using some three millimeter ply as well and that comes out quite nice you can do quite fine work on that yeah uh, so yeah that's what happened um, there's another It's kind of amazing how fine you can get things like that. And that just fell out of the cut as well. You didn't even have to force it out or anything. So, yeah. Uh, I suppose that's all for now. Um, I'll do a few more videos as I upgrade this thing. But if you are looking for a laser cutter and one that, you know, is a little bit better than those $800 ones that are sort of, they use the parallel port interface and they're a bit clunky and they've got crappy software and all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you can afford it, I'd definitely recommend maybe going up to the next step like this one. Um, so yeah, this is probably the second, sort of the second cheapest laser cutter you can get really. And for the price, it's pretty good in my opinion. Um, the only thing that is kind of annoying is it's got American plugs. Just turn the air pump off. Uh, American plugs for the water pump and air pump. So, yeah, 
they're still 240 volts so it doesn't really matter um, it's even got a grounding post down here and a fuse uh, the grounding post is if you know you live somewhere that doesn't actually have a mains ground you have to ground these separately into like a post in the ground but because I've got mains ground here it just gets through the uh, power port so that's okay uh, so thanks for watching and I'll do some videos on how you can upgrade these things a bit better uh, it worked pretty well out of the box but there's a few things that need sort of adjusting before it'll work to how I want it so yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that works out, so thanks for watching.